Hi everyone, it is Tuesday, May 19th. We're going to continue on through our weekly practice of the Ignatian Daily Exam and as we prepare for our Congregational Forum on Sunday, May 24th at 11.15 a.m. to look at our next steps forward as a congregation. At this time, if you did not view the video for Monday that has a lot of introductory material, I invite you to pause, go back to the email from yesterday, and look for the video and the written descriptions to be able to start from that point, as I'm going to continue straight now into step number two, which we can practice on Tuesday or at some other point this week. The theme for the second step is to review the day with gratitude. Our first step on Monday involved looking back on the last two months simply to try and make sense and to trust that the Spirit of God is with us through a period of time that may be awfully confusing for us to make sense of. Today we're going to sift some of that material and we're going to look for what were the moments that we received in this last two months that were a gift to us. Where did we experience joy and delight? Where did we experience God providing us new life and love in these days? So in our prayers, we're going to be focusing on the gifts that we have received, on the work that we did, the people that we interacted with, whether that was in person or from a distance. And we're going to be asking the questions, what did we receive from the people that we have engaged with within our families and our communities? What gifts did we give to others? And we're going to look for the small things. What were the little moments that we can give thanks to God for? I think back over these last few weeks, and every Sunday morning, we always start with our kids and families offering the things that we can say thank you to God for. The spirit of this second step is simply doing just that. Where can we look back in a difficult moment over these last two months and still see the things that we can give thanks to God for? So as you pray today, simply take a moment, breathe deeply, and trust that the Spirit is with you, and reflect on these things. Here's just a few of mine. I am so thankful to God that even though we are going through this difficult pandemic, that it happened in the midst of the emerging spring, that throughout this time period, the days have been warmer, the light has been increasing, and that we've had many days where we can freely walk or run outside. And that I'm really thankful that I have green spaces, uh, a river, pathways to be able to enjoy the outside safely. And that I give thanks to God for that. I also give thanks for the garden spaces that we are just beginning to plant, both in my neighborhood and then soon here at the church. And I give thanks that my wife has a barn that she keeps three horses at. And that when days are really difficult, that I get a chance to go out and muck stalls, to clean up poop, to simply just shovel that stuff into the wheelbarrow and forget some of the cares of the day. I give God thanks for the ways that creation has nourished me during this time. I give thanks for the countless people that make our lives work and that allow me to do the things that I do. And that those are people all the way from farmers that are creating food to people that work in distribution channels, moving food and resources from one place to another, and especially those delivery drivers working extra hours, getting all of those things that we need to our doorsteps. I give thanks for grocery store employees and sanitation workers and all of the researchers and scientists and medical staff and health officials that are helping us proceed step by step into this uncertain future with a virus. I give thanks for the staff and my colleagues, uh, both here in the local church, in our uh, close-knit community, in the Rocky Mountain Synod, across our country and around the world, that it is their ideas and their encouragement that keeps me going and keeps our congregation functioning well in these days with inspiration. I give thanks for my family, who they themselves are enduring and adapting to these realities, but they allow me to be honest with them to be able to come home and to simply be myself, even when being myself may not be very fun to be around. I give thanks for all of the brand new ways that we are communicating and the fact that we can see each other in real time on platforms like Zoom and that we can create videos and that we can engage day by day and week by week with one another and that we are living in a period of time where technology has made our lives so much richer because of the gifts that it has been. 
And I give so much thanks to God for each of you in our congregation, for the phone calls that you're making, the letters that you're writing, the prayers that you are uh, offering that are caring for each other, caring for me, caring for people in your lives as the church. That we are not a church that is only based around me as your pastor, but that we each are able to live out and to love others. And I thank God every day that I get to pastor a congregation that takes that call to heart in the many ways that you are caring for one another in this time. And so I could go on and keep sharing more, but that's what I'll do in my prayer life, is to continue to take notes and to journal on all of these things that I am thankful for. And I encourage you to do the same. Whether you reflect with God in the silence of your prayers, whether you take notes in a journal or you have conversations with other people around your dinner table at home or over the phone, I encourage you to take a moment in the midst of the unsettledness of this moment and to simply look for those things that we can give thanks to God for. Enjoy this moment today. Allow it to fuel you and give you strength as we continue on through our prayers this week. Peace be with you.